What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. And we're going to talk about, obviously, the title says, the Gray Man Carriers, Molly Adapters, Tactical Gear Carriers, whatever people want to call them. There's a lot of reviews on these out there, and I've had these for probably about a year, and I just have been back, kind of back and forth with them because I'll use them, and they're kind of great in certain circumstances, and then I use them, and they're not so great in other circumstances. So there's a lot of really good things that go into these, and then there's some things that maybe just won't work for everybody. Now, this one, as you can see, I have completely rigged up. It's got a bunch of Molly gear on it. It's got one of my uh, AR pistols on it. It's got some magazines. It's got an extra sling. I got a big old knife on here. And then just, you know, a Molly pouch way down here on the bottom. So these are pretty good sized. And if you guys don't know how these are kind of designed, basically this is meant to kind of go over the back of your seat. And then this goes around the headrest on the front side. And then there's a strap down here on the uh, bottom right here, which goes around the base of the seat. And those just kind of rest on the back of your seat, just like they are right there. Now that's good if your vehicle is always in a secured location. If your vehicle is not in a secured location, this is probably not what you want hanging out on the back of your seat. Um, I have seen that personally. I was in a parking lot, I'm walking through and I see a ragtop Jeep with one of these things hanging off the back seat full of stuff. And I'm thinking, well, that's really not the best idea. Somebody just has to go slice, go through, grab it and take off with all your kit. Now, most of this stuff here is replaceable. Everything's actually replaceable. The last thing we want out there on the street is one of our weapon systems because that could be used for a crime and it's most likely going to be used for a crime at some point if it's been stolen. So there's definitely some good and there's definitely some bad when it comes to these things. And then if you do have a nice secured area or you don't, there's a pretty easy way to conceal these. Basically, you can just throw a towel or a shirt over it and then have some form of cable lock or something that you can put through your weapon system there to secure that in your vehicle. Um, that's not gonna be 100%, but what it does is it buys time. And one thing criminals don't wanna do is hang out for longer than they have to, especially in well-lit areas if they're committing a crime. I know there's a lot of people out here that are using these things right now. Some guys in the military are using them inside Humvees and different uh, scenarios like that. I've tried using this in my personal vehicle. Um, I've used this in a couple of my friends' vehicles, used it in the outdoor stuff. Had it in a uh, carry, carry all cavil trail, uh, <laughs> carry all travel trailer type thing hanging up to put stuff on it. So it's definitely got some pretty cool purposes. It's just like I said, I'm kind of back and forth on it because it's not something that I want to leave in my vehicle all the time. I find myself having to take it in and out every day because I just don't want to leave my kit um, hanging out either in my driveway or in the office parking lot or anything like that. I just don't want to leave that stuff there even though you can conceal it to an extent. Now there are some very good ways you can conceal this gray man stuff. And that is, you can be placed up under seats, it can be placed in Pelican cases. There are ways to conceal it and still have your kit with you. It just kind of depends on really what you want to carry around with you. Do you want to carry a gun belt and a gear bag, or do you want to carry something like this and just have it all with you? So I'll run you through kind of just sitting here what I have on there and kind of what a blank one looks like. All oh, this one's not completely blank. You can see it's got my tactical tomahawk on it. But this is how it is. And you can kind of weave your Molly gear through here your malice clips will go through here, although you can't weave them like you technically would. And then they also have all these different lengths of straps like this. You know, they're Velcro that you can put things through. Or you can just go to any kind of like fabric store or even I think Walmart and just buy double-sided Velcro like this, cut it to the length you need and use that. But these straps are good because they go around there and you can use it for pretty much anything that you want to uh, attach to this panel. Like I said, this portion, there are several different designs. Some of them have like QDs now. This is just the quick, quick uh, fast set clips like that. This goes around the headrest. This one goes around the base of the seat and you tighten it to your vehicle seat. So in all, it's actually a pretty cool design. Now, Gray Man Tactical is the name of the company. Is it really gray? I, I don't know. I would say no, unless it's hidden because gray man, if you don't know what that kind of means, basically means kind of unknown, dangerous guy in the room, but you can't really tell. This screams tactical stuff. Um, I mean, if this is hanging on the back of a seat in a vehicle, I mean, everybody knows. I mean, look at that. <laughs> That's, there's nothing gray about that, but still really cool design. Now, like I said, those Velcro things, they've got a bunch of different options. You see, I have one of the Velcro things right here on this light, and then I've got one of their bungee uh, quick release clips right here. Kind of a second one right here that I'll pull off and show you guys real fast how they work because those are actually pretty cool because you can put a lot of stuff on there. So you can see right here, 
I'll bring this up closer for you guys. That right there is kind of a bungee cord that you can tighten, but it snaps together just like that on those two ends. Well, that's awesome because that just pretty much leaves it limitless for what you can attach to these panels. Now the panels are pretty thick, they're pretty good. There is a little bit of flexibility to them. Uh, the more weight you put on them, uh, they do flex kind of, you know, a little bit. They do have a thicker version that's a less flex design, but they give you a lot of options. These are pretty much, uh, I mean, you build it the way you want. They have inserts so you can put your Spartan holsters on here, your RTI style holsters on here. They've got metal inserts for pretty much all of that stuff, and that's how actually the rifle here connects because in this one that I have, they've got several different versions. You can see that the rifle is in here on these big kind of rubber connections that you just peel open right there and right down here. It's pretty good, but there is a metal backer that screws on to the backside, as you can see right here, and that's what actually retains that. Now they sell those for several different holster styles and brands, so you could actually put your duty holster, your whole rig on this, carry this in your patrol car with you or your Humvee, you military guys out there. Um, take it anywhere you want. Um, like I said, there is a place for these, just depending on what you're gonna use them for. I've got a bunch of stuff on here. You just holes on the sides, you can put clips in there. You can put QD points in there. Anything you can screw into this thing, you can pretty much keep it on there. Like I said, and it's definitely set up for kind of, you know, all of your tactical gear to be in one place should you decide to not have it in a bag or on a kit or something like that. So it's a pretty cool design. Now having the weapon on it like this, um, you know, I tried that out with these things. Um, is it secure? Yes, it holds the weapon on there very nicely. I've driven around with it. Um, I've gone four wheeling with it. Like I said, I've had it in a travel trailer. I've tried a couple different things with it. So it's a very secure design. Now, would I leave it in here like this where somebody could see it? Absolutely not. Um, and then you kind of have to think about, is this the most optimal place to store your rifle should you have to go for it? You know, I probably don't want to be trying to undo some form of clip or retention or, you know, electronic release device. Well, it's going to be a pain in the butt because they do fail. Sometimes you have to force them open and sometimes they just don't hold everything that you need. So it can be size dependent based on how your rifle's set up, whether their um, attachments for your rifle are actually going to work with your rifle depending on how much stuff you have on that quad rail. But they are pretty good. They do work. Just depends on what your circumstance is. Now, for my hunters and fishers and guys that are taking this stuff with them everywhere they go, yeah, pretty cool. You could have this on your seat back. You could be driving through, get out everywhere, have everything right there, throw it in your tent with you. And that's pretty cool design, like I said. The quality of the stuff that they have and the attachments and the Velcro and everything, it's good. It's, it's not had any issues at all. Um, it does kind of get a little bit annoying with that thing moving around on the back of your seat. Um, it's not going to fit flush depending on what type of seat and how curved it is. So those are things you kind of have to take into account. But like I said, there are other places you can mount this, like underneath seats. You can mount them in Pelican cases. It's pretty much endless what you can do with these things, and that is pretty cool. And let's talk about the cost of them. I got these on a sale, but they can get a little pricey, especially once you start outfitting them with their uh, accessories and all that. You can spend well over three, four hundred bucks getting different rifle plate car or right car uh, rifle carriers, lock-ins, different attachments on there. It can get rather expensive, and you kind of have to decide if you want to buy some basic kind of throw-over nylon molly panel for the back of your seat, or you want something a little bit more rigid like this. And that's really going to be something that's up to you, but it is actually a pretty cool design. Really just depends on what your use is. Now, would I buy these again? I'm going to say no, and I'm saying no, I wouldn't buy them again because they just don't fit my lifestyle. I don't always have a secured parking lot and I don't feel comfortable leaving a, a lot of kit and a rifle or a pistol or anything in my car in an environment like that. I do have a cable lock that I carry with me when I have this down here. Uh, it's a basic cable lock. There's all kinds of ones out here. Um, I would actually recommend a larger version of this and I will leave links for all of this stuff down below. But even with that cable lock and some other stuff, I just don't feel comfortable leaving those items in the car because should something happen and that made its hands into, or that, that rifle made its way into the hands of a bad guy, I would feel terrible about that if it was used in the commission of a crime or God forbid somebody got hurt with it. So for my lifestyle and what I have going on, this doesn't work for this scenario. Now, something that absolutely does work for, for me is 
organization of things that aren't, you know, that I'm not worried about being, uh, getting stolen or something. So kind of those accessories I take to the range with me, like range bag type stuff, having a couple molly pouches on there and having some of those things that are readily available. They're, they're on like something like this where it's there, I can just grab it and take it instead of reaching in a bag or pulling stuff out. It's all kind of organized and that's where this really shines for me. So depending on your usage, you know, would I buy it again for a rifle carrying store or anything like that? Absolutely not. Now that I have them, I have a use for them, but it's kind of one of those things where knowing what I know now, would I buy it again? Probably not because there's just so many other things I can do to store and kind of itemize my gear and have it where I want it. That something like this, especially with the cost of it, just doesn't fit um, you know, my lifestyle and my circumstances as it is. Now, if I had a secured place to park at all times and I wasn't concerned about anything like that, yeah, this would be a pretty cool design. They do have some better options as far as QD attachment points and things like that. And they have a stiffer model of it now, so there's not as much flex in it, which are all pretty cool things to go. Really just comes down to how deep is your pocketbook. Cause like anything else in the tactical or firearms world, it get deep in the book real quick when it comes to money. So it really depends on what you're into guys. I will leave links for all of this stuff uh, down below for you if you are interested in it. I hope you guys like learning about this and hearing my opinion on the gray man tactical stuff. Um, it's good, it's quality stuff. It really just depends on does it fit your lifestyle or maybe you have a completely different use for it than uh, rifles and firearms or anything like that. And if you do, let me know down below. But go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me if you like what's going on with the channel. Hit the like button if you like the video. You guys get out there and have some fun. I will see you guys on the next one.